In this video, I'm going to use momentum to solve a very different type of problem. So, let's say I have a scale. So, this scale, and on one side, there's a mass that's uh, two kilograms, mass on one side. And on the other side, I'm going to be, uh, I have a large number of beads, well, or little rocks, we'll say, that I'm um, dropping from a height of five meters off the ground. Each little rock is 0.1 kilograms, and I'm going to be dropping these uh, small, uh, let's, let's get something that bounces more, a little, little rubber balls. We're going to need something that bounces really well. Uh, 0.1 kilograms a piece. We're going to be dropping them on the scale so that they bounce off. And they bounce such that they have the same velocity um, off that they, they come with. And, and then they, they stay off. We're not going to have repeated bounces. Each one bounces only once on the scale. And so I'm going to be dropping these uh, little rubber balls on my scale, and I want to know at what rate do I need to drop them such that the scale ba balances. So what does that mean? Well, over here I have this mass, and, and it's, it's sitting on the scale, and we can think about that in terms of forces, which is fine. But over here, now I'm going to be... Uh, uh, dropping these little rubber balls on the scale and so there's going to be some sort of average force that they contribute to this scale and I want this average force to equal the gravitational force of this two kilogram mass so if we go over there what is that well that's the the force is just the uh, mass times the the gravity we're, we're in this example we're gonna take G is 10 meters per second squared everywhere and so this is say a, a 20 newton weight on one side and so uh, how fast do I need to drop these little rubber balls so that they contribute an average of 20 newton force on the scale well at, at 5 meters per second let's do some kinematics and, and let's what kind of velocity do do they uh, come up with when they get to the bottom the velocity is square root of 2g times the height that which they drop so we're going to say 2 times again g is 10 for our example height of of 5 meters well conveniently enough that's going to be 10 meters per second we're neglecting air resistance all right so and also we're saying that each each ball drops once but it does hit perfectly vertically. Vertically, we're going to make some approximations to simplify things. Okay. So what what's going to happen? So as these these little rubber balls hit the scale, they're going to contribute some average force, and this average force then is is going to be equal to the sort of average momentum change that occurs due to dropping these rubber balls. So so what is their momentum change? So if we look at a we're gonna sort of a a side version of what happens. So each ball is going to come in and then it's going to rebound away and we're going to say it rebounds with the same velocity. And so if we establish a coordinate system here and we'll have our positive x up here, this is our positive x-axis. So that means uh, each uh, little ball that comes in undergoes a momentum change. And this is just one-dimensional, p final minus p initial. Well, initially, it's going in the, the, the negative x direction. We said this is positive x. So it initially has some momentum of negative, its mass, mass times its velocity. Oh, I'm sorry, the final, of course, sorry, the initial is, is negative, so, so final is positive, which is its, its uh, mass 
uh, we'll just put in some numbers, times its velocity, which is 10, and then minus its initial, and uh, it's going in the negative x direction initially, so that's 1 plus 1, and so there's a 2 kilograms meters per second momentum change that occurs for each dropped rubber ball. Okay, so I want this uh, this time averaged if I need if, if there's a momentum change sort of an impulse then of two kilograms meters per second then I want that to uh, so this momentum change leads to some average force over the this time interval of interest. So what sort of uh, time interval then is going to get us this this average force? And so as we know you have from some average over some delta time with our sort of our impulse how we define the impulse here then gives us a change in momentum. And so then we can solve then for the time necessary such that this change in momentum will give us the average force of interest, which is uh, 20 newtons. And so delta t then is just the, our, each momentum change over the average force of interest, which is then 2 over 20, or 0.1 seconds. And so dropping each one of our rubber balls 10 a second will give us an average force of 20 newtons and that average force of 20 newtons will then balance the 20 newton weight on the other side of the scale. And so this is now uh, sort of a way to use momentum to solve problems in a very different way. And in fact, it leads to the idea of continuous motion for uh, if you sort of continuous mass problems that can be solved using momentum as well.